So one of the most fundamental examples of this is an HR AI uh, developed by Amazon that was uh, um, taken out, uh, out of the market because it was discovered that the artificial intelligence who was screening CVs, the best CVs in the field to find the best candidates, had automatically taught itself that they had to um, exclude uh, women. Because obviously the best CVs in a very male-dominated industry were of men. One key example which I, th I find fascinating is the example of the body mass index. If you think about the body mass index, uh, it is usually used to, to identify healthy bodies, to determine if a person is healthy or not. But as research has shown, the body mass index has been often calculated on the basis of the white uh, Caucasian uh, body. And uh, so, for instance, if you have a different uh, uh, index for a black uh, woman, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's not a healthy index. Um, and what happens to our technologies is that we often we have to give them a set of readings into our world and the body mass index is a, is a key example of that if we think about our health apps or our health technologies. Um, and, uh, but in the, in the moment in which we train them with this uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, readings that, that have been biased and that, that we know are biased, then that automatically is transferred into the technology. So for instance, uh, um, one of the examples that we were studying, um, it was the example of the dermatology apps uh, developed uh, to uh, predict uh, whether there was a, a specific skin condition. And, uh, and it was a, wild, wi a widely reported example because uh, it was found out that these apps uh, had shown a racist bias uh, uh, because they couldn't recognize darker skin tones. Now, once you have an error of that type, you have two issues. One, obviously, it's a human issue. What happens if uh, something gets uh, uh, undiagnosed, or like a, 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 a serious condition gets un undiagnosed? And, uh, and what are the implications of building a technology that could, uh, um, could have a negative impact on a specific type of population? That's, that's a good question. The other fundamental question is, uh, is what happens if the, the technology overdiagnoses? and how much of the resources of that overdiagnosis uh, are then have to be invested in the public sector and in the health sector with doctors that have to kind of compensate for all this overdiagnosis. And the project was meant, um, was divided in two stages. On the one hand, we wanted to map the debates, how as a society we were negotiating with the, these issues. Um, on the other hand, we wanted to talk to people uh, that were actively engaged in these debates uh, to understand what type of solutions they were envisaging and what type of ideas uh, um, they were reflecting on. So that's how the Human Error Project was born. On mainstream media, there is often a tendency to report on artificial intelligence in a very techno-utopian, te techno-optimistic way. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is kind of overshadowing a much more critical uh, and in-depth understanding of the implications of these technologies for society. Um, and even when that's happening, it's happening again in a bit of a, sens a sensationalist way in which when, when mainstream media reflects on the impacts of artificial intelligence, it often goes off talking about the difference between human and the artificial intelligence, human intelligence and artificial intelligence, and doesn't really um, kind of in, analyze at de in depth uh, um, the type of science there is behind these technologies, the methodologies that have been chosen. So it's very much sensationalist, but not very practical in, uh, in uh, finding solutions or understanding the problem. Mm -hmm.